I'm going to show you how to paint better portraits with focal points. How do you get someone to look at what you want them to look at in your art? That's the question I'll be tackling in this critique. Abigail submitted this portrait to me asking for help and this is what she wrote. The textures in the hair, shirt, and curtain are taking away from the focal point of the face. I feel like it's messy and scattered. She's tried simplifying and softening the hair and the shirt, but it wasn't coming out how she wanted. So let's get into it. I'm Daniel Folta from Evolve Artist, where we get people to pro art skills in about a year, and in this critique I'll be using Photoshop to show you the effects of the changes that I'm suggesting. Focal points are areas that attract the eye, and in this case, Abigail wants to put the area of focus on the face of this girl. Now in order to capture attention in one area, other areas need to capture less attention. So let's break this painting down into three basic areas of depth. The background, the head, and the torso. There are three tools you can use to attract the eye without changing the composition. Value, color, and edge. Let's quickly look at each one. For values, our eyes are drawn to high contrast. For color, our eyes are drawn to high contrast and color as well, but also saturation. And for edges, our eyes are drawn to sharp transitions in value or color. That is, sharp detail, things in focus, things like that. So in this portrait, we want to make sure that the primary focal point has high value contrast, high color contrast, and sharper edges than anywhere else. But the face already has those things, so we need to use these tools in other areas to make them attract less attention. But which tool should we use? Well, it varies depending on the painting. For this background, I recommend using edges. By softening everything, I can create a depth of field that brings the attention away from the curtains and onto the face. But we can't really use the same tool for her torso, because her torso is closer to us and also close in depth to the focal point. Color doesn't work here either, but maybe value will work. Look at how dark this shadow is. It's almost as dark as these recessed areas in her neck. If I make this shadow brighter, I can reduce the contrast and draw less attention here. I also lifted the shadows in her shirt with some color, and then I'll selectively soften a few edges that otherwise detract from focusing on the face. Of course, there are focal points inside the face itself. The eye has high contrast in value and color, and has sharp edges. The nose and the mouth quickly follow suit with sharp edges and high contrasting values, but less contrast in color compared to that bright blue eye. So these tools work for smaller, subtle areas as well. And that's how you create a focal point. Now, if you're still watching, I'll keep going with this critique a little further. There's a lot of things that Abigail is doing really well here. Overall, she has a strong sense of light and shadow in her painting from both her values and her colors. The eye she painted is beautifully done. Abigail, if I were to give you one thing to focus on improving, it would be your gradients. Just by making softer gradients in the form shadows of the face, I was able to take this painting to the next level. I made notations for you of where the form and cast shadows are to help you with your future paintings. If you don't know what form shadows are, go watch our playlist on the fundamentals of art. But again, overall, I think you did a great job with this painting, and especially that bright blue eye. Thank you, Abigail, for sharing this painting for a critique, and thank you, everyone else, for watching. In the Evolve program, we give constructive feedback on every painting assignment you make within 24 hours. If you want to learn more about Evolve, you can check out the links in our description for more information. Happy painting, everyone!